and share the slides. Yeah, okay. So, um, can you see it? Yeah. Is it visible, guys? Yeah, okay, good. So, uh, this session is uh, just uh, an overview and the demo session of uh, how we can, can use AI uh, or LLMs uh, such as ChatGPT and others uh, in order to aid us in the screening process of uh, uh, just to help us screen the, uh, the CVs that we have received from the candidates. Okay, so uh, just as a start, let's start from um, why we uh, use AI for screening, why we want, why we would use, or why we would want to use AI for screening. Um, yeah, so the first thing is it's easy to use. So uh, like, uh, especially currently uh, for every job uh, postings of uh, that we make, as an HR or as a project management or, or anything, uh, there is a lot of uh, applicants that are going to apply. So having an AI uh, to help us in this screening process is going to be uh, to make everything uh, or the process easy to use. Or even the the <clears throat> the AIs or the LLMs are easy to use in order to uh, help us in this process. I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, the second thing is it increases the efficiency. So, uh, like we can do a lot more. Uh, like uh, we can screen. We we can go through a lot more uh, CVs uh, by using AI than uh, what we would do if we are just doing it ma manually. So it reduces the it increases the efficiency. Uh, uh, reduces the human bias because humans uh, can, can be biased, but AI uh, is going to have a consistent evaluation criteria for all uh, of the applicants. So it's not going to be biased easily. Um, and it also improves uh, the accuracy of the uh, screening because it's it has a consistent evaluation criteria. and. Uh, it's better for the ex uh, candidate experience. Uh, what this means is normally, if you are doing it manually, for instance, let's assume that uh, a thousand people or a, a thousand candidates has have applied uh, to a job posting that we have posted. So going through uh, a thousand uh, applications, CVs, and uh, coming up with uh, like, uh, le let's say a hundred and then a 20 and then five and then so on, it's going to take a lot of time. So it's not a good uh, experience for the, the applicants or the candidates. So, but by using AI, we can reduce this time and uh, like make the process smooth that the candidate's experience it will be better. Okay. Uh, so the next thing is, uh, okay, so we know why we use uh, AI and the benefits. So let's uh, start with uh, how we are going to use it. So when we use AI for screening, we need to, uh, we need to tell it the screening criteria. So uh, for instance, the skills and the qualifications that we are looking for for that specific position the relevant experience, uh, the educational background, the certifications, and memberships. Um, so, uh, for instance, uh, some positions might not need uh, a background, an educational background as much as the experience. So, you might not have a degree in that particular, uh, like, let's say, job description, but you may have experience. Uh, like you may be uh, self-taught, uh, uh, for instance, let's take uh, uh, like a digital marketing. You might not have uh, a marketing degree, but you might have a, a, a three-year experience in marketing, right? So 
the person that is looking for uh, a digital marketing or a marketing candidate might not need uh, as much uh, might not have as much uh, education uh, like focus on the educational background as it as the, uh, as much as the relevant experience so these things can be weighted so this is the weighting the criteria so uh, you just assign importance for each uh, criteria based on the job requirements so what this means is uh, for instance uh, just as uh, as i have said you might give uh, the relevant experience a 40% uh, uh, weight. So you might need more than that percent to have, uh, or you might need the AI to be, uh, to have a screening focus or to be more focused on the experience, right? So you might give it a weight uh, of uh, a higher weight than the others and so on. Uh, we will see this in example. So yeah. So after we create and wait. Uh, so by the way, the waiting is not a must. But if you prefer uh, to wait, it it's available. Uh, it's an available thing that you can do with AI. So after um, you have created the job descriptions in the weights, you're gonna de uh, develop the prompt. So the prompt can be, uh, you can start with the prompt and you have to iterate, uh, iterate through it to refine it. So for instance, the first uh, the first prompt could be evaluate this CV for the job position. You, you're gonna insert the title here and focus on the skills and you're gonna uh, like list the skills here. This is one, one way. And the other is, uh, you're gonna iterate it depending on the outcomes. So if you don't like the outcomes, you're gonna change it. You're gonna iterate through it and you're gonna come up with a better prompt that's going to give you a better result. Okay, uh, I think I'm moving a bit fast. Uh, is there any quick questions, guys, from the... Yeah. Um, could you go back to the last slide quickly? Please? Okay, here. Yes. Okay. Uh, which part do you want me to go, or the whole thing? No, no, no. I just wanted to see something. I was looking at the prompt, but now I'm okay. We can move on. Oh, okay. Uh, anyone? Uh, okay. Any other questions, guys? Okay. Okay. So. The benefits and the limitations of uh, using AI uh, could be the benefits could, could be uh, saving time and reducing the bias, that's human bias, and consistency. So these three things are the key things that we're looking for when we use AI for these things. So as we have said, especially uh, in the current job market, uh, there are going to be thousands of candidates that are going to apply for each job descriptions or each job each job uh, listing so it's going to be hard to go through each uh each cvs or like each uh, candidate manually so it's going to take us a lot of time it's going to take us uh, it's going to take a lot of resource just to accomplish this so with AI, we can save a lot of time and consistency uh, and reducing bias can actually go uh, side, side by side because um, uh, like when uh, humans can be biased, right? Like uh, they might be like uh, the first day, uh, sometimes it might depend on the energy of the, that person. Uh, it might depend on the mood of that person, like, right? So uh, these things are not going to occur uh, with AI. But the limitations are, uh, it might miss some uh, like nuanced uh, judgments, some little details, uh, and relies on uh, the quality of the data and the quality of the prompt that we give it. So you have to give it a good prompt and you have to give it a good data for it to return a better uh, screening.
Yeah, okay. So how can we integrate these results with the whole workflow, like the recruitment for work workflow? So uh, I think you have used AI in order to create um, the job posting or the job descriptions. Uh, so that's the first thing that you did with AI. You have integrated it into the recruitment workflow. And the second thing you did is you created um, the interview questions, right? And now you are screening them. So. Uh, so you're you're gonna uh, so automate the short listing. The first thing you are going to do is you're gonna uh, use uh, ChatGPT or other uh, other LLMs uh, to have to create a short list of the candidates. For, for instance, from the five you have, you're gonna create a short list of two, right? But you have to uh, use human oversight. So when uh, after the ai has generated or shortlisted the candidates you need to go through them manually and uh, check if they align with the company value and the specific job descriptions that they're just the nuances so uh am i clear guys okay how do we load the CV to chat? Uh, yeah, we will see it, uh, Collagio. We will see the examples. Any other questions, guys? Okay. Okay, so uh, the best practices uh, in CV screening or screening CVs uh, by using AI. Uh, the first thing that you need is uh, continuous improvement. What this means is we have seen it on the others uh, on the previous slides that we need to iterate through the prompts in order to generate or to craft a better prompt, right? So you need to uh, regularly update the criteria and the prompts based on the hiring outcomes. So uh, you might not use the same uh, prompt uh, that you used when uh, screening. CVs for, uh, let's say, um, the finance uh, for the IT. So you need to uh, like regularly update the prompts depending on the uh, criteria and so on. Okay. In transparency, uh, so you need to ensure candidates are awarded uh, for uh, like you need to tell them so this is just a uh, best practice uh, it's not a must for this project um and ethical considerations uh you need to ensure that the fair the evaluation is fair in order to avoid the bias that might be created by uh, by when the ai misses the nonce criteria okay so uh, that's it for the introduction um so any uh, questions before we move on to the um like okay i think i see uh okay okay in case i want Yeah, so AI is smart and it knows that uh, MSC and master's degree is the same thing. So you don't need to worry about that one, Collagio. And that's a good question. Questions, guys? Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. So let me share uh, my screen. Okay. Are you see it? Okay, good. Okay, so uh, so I'm using the regular uh, chat GPT here. So, uh, so what I want to do uh, here is just let me, I think I have already uh, had AI to create a job description earlier. So let me just 
uh, could be that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the prompt is going to be, uh, let's, I want you to screen this, uh, let's say three, and did it. Uh, for the job description. Okay. So this is just the job de description for uh, uh, software development position. So the skills required are proficiency in Python Java, which is weighted for uh, 40%, and experience with framework like uh, Django and Spring, 20%, and uh, like uh, the version control system, fam familiarity with that is 10 percent and the uh, minimum experience is 2020 and so on right so we have the education we have the criteria and everything so we have this is just an example uh job position right like uh, description so what i want to do is just upload uh, the cv from here so uh can you see this Um, I'm not sure. Okay. So I just selected this one. So uh, if it was not visible, you can uh, just tell me. So this is one. So I'm going to upload again. Um, this is a second one. And I'm, uh, I'm actually using the same, uh, CVs that is available uh, uh, on the drive that we gave you. So this is these three are from the job, uh, the CVs for that we have gave you on the IT department. So I have uploaded the CVs here, and I have uh, written the prompt. So the next thing I go, I'm going to do is just send it. Uh, yeah, it's going to read the documents. And it's going to give me uh, the weights. So, yeah, if you can see here, so if it evaluated according to each skill, uh, the proficiency in uh, Python, the experience, the familiarity, everything that I have given it, it has uh, weighted it and gave, gave me the results. So, uh, Python and Java, 20 out of because it's proficient, uh, that person is proficient in Python, but not in Java. So 20 uh, for Python and uh, zero in for Java. Uh, and for the framework, zero out of 20. That person didn't mention our Git, so it's zero out of 10. And for the experience, it, it, it has, the sorry, the person has more than three years of experience, so 20 out of 20 and so on so it's not it's not mentioned that he has or she has uh, an experience in full stack so zero education and so on so this person overall has 50 out of uh, 100 and the second person has also 50 out of 100 and the last one has 20 out of 100 so uh so but uh so here it's going even though the two candidates are tied is going to uh, give you uh, more details here in order to in order for you to choose it easily to choose or to pick from them easily but i think uh, it's giving me candidate one and candidate two but i want to have the name uh,
Okay. So um, this is going to be easier because we're not going to we are not going to have to uh, look through the file name just to find them. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to generate the same thing, but now with the name included. Okay, uh, so uh, any questions on that, guys? Hello? I'm audible. Okay. Yes, shallow. Okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't see the prompts you used. Was there a specific prompts you used to analyze for the um, chat GPT? Okay. Uh, the prompt that I use is here. So this is the job description that you have created, right? So this is yeah. taken from the job description. I just given it weight uh, because I wanted uh, to weight it, but it's optional. It's totally optional. You can just uh, write the uh, job description here, and you want you're just gonna say, I want you to screen these uh, five for for your case, five candidates for the job description. Uh, posted below and you're going to give it the job description and you're going to op upload um, the uh, files, the PDF files. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay you're welcome. Um, so the reason that I used um, ChatGPT is because ChatGPT uh, allows you to uh, upload uh, the uh, files, the PDF files and the docs and everything. Uh, so it's easier uh, than to just uh, copy and paste everything for every content. So uh, yeah, but you can uh, use other uh, LLMs as well. You're not limited to ten uh, the chat GPT. I think yeah. Okay. Yes. Zero file. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there is the problem is chat uh, GPT at the moment. Maybe uh, and uh, three point five is. I think it's restricted for data analysis. Um, I I am actually using three point five. I don't have the uh, I don't have the plus the premium uh, account. So I'm using 3.5, but of course the 3.5 you can choose from here. Uh, you cannot att attach do documents to the 3.5, but uh, the chat GPT 4.0 is uh, free uh, for some quota. So for your case, you can definitely use uh, chat GPT 4.0. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I'm using the free version. So I'm assuming that most of uh, the trainees have the free version, so they can use the same thing. Just make sure that here you have selected four, not three point five. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, Corlajo. So. Uh, so uh, LLMs are not R smart, but they depend on our prompts. So the better the prompt, the better the result. So you need that, that's why I'm, I'm, I was saying earlier, you need to iterate or you need to go through uh, the prompts again and again and iterate uh, just to get a better result. So yeah, it does depend on the quality of the prompt.
Okay. Uh, are there questions, guys? Okay, is it clear? Okay, uh, at least if it is clear, uh, show me some reactions and we can end the call. Okay, Leah and Kiperi has understood it. Okay. okay, how is the project going? Is it going good? Um, how is everyone progressing? All is good on my side. Good. That's good to hear. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, okay. That's good to hear. So if you have any questions, make sure to forward them on the Slack. And uh, yeah, have a good day, everyone. You said that we have to wait the prompt. N uh, no, I said you can. You not have to. It's optional. Optional, of course. Yeah. But like uh, for the future, if you work on the uh, operations team or the HR team, you might need to wait it because, uh, as I have explained earlier, uh, you might need more experience than the background, the educational background. So uh, you might need to consider these things when we're waiting. It. So you, the waiting is just there for you to have uh, like this waiting mechanism if you have a preference of uh, the skills one over the other. So if you prefer that person to have, uh, to be more on the Python uh, than the Java, you might weight the Python skill more than the Java skill and so on, but it's optional. And, and uh, is, the, is, the, is percentage the only way to no, you can you can actually uh, use fractions. You can say one over ten for this one, two over ten for this one, and so on. Okay. Or high, medium, low. You can do that too. Understood. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you, guys. Have a good day.